Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. So we're going to do something a little bit different today. Usually we go over the news, what's happening in the space, the crypto digital asset space. But today I wanted to just go over Towncoin. And it's uh, one of those projects that kind of came out of nowhere. And uh, it took me by surprise. I think it took a lot of people by surprise. And the thing I had to ask myself is, what am I missing? But before I put all this together, I actually asked everybody a simple question. I said, what are the negatives to ton token that is stopping you from investing in it? And I like to do these things and pull the community because I can't do everything. I can't get all the questions. I can't get all the answers. So what I like to do is just reach out to people who are far smarter than me, which would be my community, and ask them this exact question. And so far, this was yesterday, uh, with about uh, 500 votes or so, it comes down to high market cap and concentration of tokens. 10% says lack of adoption, and others, of course, they post below. Uh, Shartoshi says he's got a problem with adoption, which uh, I can understand. Red Panda Pie has, uh, she says, uh, he or she says, yeah, this is uh, the problem for me. It's it's the Telegram app itself. I'm a I'm an app minimalist, and then uh, they bring forth a great interview. Uh, between the founder of uh, Telegram and uh, Tucker Carlson, which is a really great uh, feed. You can take a, take a look at that. And then, of course, everybody will say their own different opinions, like uh, Token says, <laughs> it's not Bitcoin, you okay, bro, we'll get to that. And some people just say there are none. So I took this into consideration when I put together the big list. And the big list is just a deep dive of about what TonCoin is. Before I go on, I can just say, with 100% assurance that this is risky. All investments are have risk. They are something that you really need to take a, a big consideration before you invest any of your harder money. And of course, just follow the rules. The rules be below me right now is very simple. I got five of them and they've saved me from a lot of heartache. One of those is it's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. 100% scams. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Don't leave things on exchanges. Use a cold storage device. Don't use leverage and take profits along the way. And you'll be a hell of a lot happier. So these are the rules that I have for myself. And you can determine if those are something that you want to do. But let's jump into why TonCoin. So first of all, we're going to be doing a giveaway. Because when we talk about speed and TPS and the blockchain itself, it seems to be very fast. But let's test that out by giving you some ton coin. So if you don't have uh, a wallet right now, there's a link in the description or you can just go to ton.org then click on wallets and download a wallet. Now, there is a big difference between the custodial wallet in the upper right hand corner there in blue, uh, which is in integrated into the app itself. If you're an American, you're not going to get that because they're not going to allow that. And the reason for that is uh, a friend of the show, Gary Gensler, as he tries to protect everybody harder, which is fine. But if you can't, if you're not in the United States and you're elsewhere, you can use the wallet. But if you are in the US and I don't know, North Korea and Iran and stuff like that, you can download TonKeeper or TonHub or my Ton Wallet, And it's very simple to do. Just go to that address and uh, download it. And if you want to find out more information about TonCoin, you can find everything at ton.org. And I found it interesting. We just click on use. Uh, you can find everything from how they've integrated Tether onto Ton. Uh, how you can get the wallet, how you can stake it. I didn't know you could actually stake it. You can stake that within the actual app. You can accept payments. You can do a bridge. Right now they have, it's EVM compatible with Ethereum. They're, lo they're working for Bitcoin, maybe Solana down the road, who knows. Domains and of course the Open League. You can actually mint your own token on there. Uh, there's the wallet itself. You can accept payments worldwide if you're a business. And you can do the Open League, which is essentially a big, big airdrop. But again, that's for you to do your own research. The link's in the description for ton.org. That's what's going on. And before we get into it, just so everybody knows, I know I'm gonna get this in the comment section. I did not buy a ton of ton token and uh, got out of other positions. I dollar cost average. I think that's the safest thing for me. Every time I do like a big lump sum, everything goes down. So for me, I thought it was just better just to keep my portfolio the way it was and to dollar cost average ton coin moving forward. I actually have a reminder to that every day. Here's my portfolio. We can see that, you know, most of it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Sol, Near, Cardano, AVAX, Link, Stacks, so on and so forth. And I got 67 others, which would also be ton coin. So before I hear in the comment section, like uh, one of the commenters, well, this isn't Bitcoin. Yes, that's true, but uh, it is an altcoin. It is risky. So. Why ton? It comes down to tech and adoption. That's really what it comes down to. The technology is solid. And the adoption is massive. Here's the thing I came apart. I don't know if you remember back in uh, 2019, somewhere around there, 
Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook, he wanted to launch his own cryptocurrency called Libra. And it was a pretty great idea if you thought about it because they have massive adoption in their apps themselves. Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp Messenger, our Messenger, just in Q1 of 2024, has roughly 400 to 500 million downloads. That's just in Q1. And if you take a look at uh, Telegram, in Q1, it's got almost 80 million. So it's pretty close. Now, if you take a look at, you know, the, as far as social networks and who's on them in 2024, you can see Facebook is massive. YouTube as well, 2.5, 3 billion. WhatsApp and Instagram, two and two. And then of course it kind of slides down for other ones like TikTok, 1.5 billion, 1 billion for Messenger. But you may notice right here, 900 million. That's Telegram. So imagine this, you've got 900 million. Now I think it's close to a billion people. You've got a billion people they're on this messaging service globally. And I know this is hard for me to believe, but uh, United States is not the center of the world. I know I kind of get that a little bit construed, misconstrued, but you've got a ton of people on Telegram and now you have a cryptocurrency or digital asset called TonCoin. It could do very well, but there's a catch. So the first thing is this, and this is actually something that Red Panda Pie brought up to me, which was, well, I don't really like to do a bunch of apps, because, you know, it's just another messaging app, which is true. But over the last month, two months, two and a half months or so, it's not just the apps or it's not just the messaging service. They have apps that you can download within the Telegram app. And if you're looking for uh, that link, this slideshow that I'm, I'm presenting to you is open source. I put the link in the description and all the links where I have the source down here, like for this Telegram app center, you can click on that and go to it. And all the different things that we can take a look as far as like on-chain analytics uh, and a host of other things, you can find those links in this presentation I'm giving to you right now. So apps themselves, it's not just games. It's not just tap-tap games. I mean, you've got stuff like VPN apps, you've got storage, you've got organization apps, you've got DeFi. And of course, yes, you got the uh, occasional or massive amounts of games. So there's apps within an app and I gotta tell you, I've been using this now for about three weeks or four weeks. It's seamless, it's super easy. So now I kind of get like, okay, it's not just a messaging service. It's a lot of apps that I actually need to use in some way, shape or form. But let's break, let's back it up. Let's talk about one of the first apps. And it's the most, to me, it was an interesting use case because this is called NotCoin. And NotCoin was just a tap tap game was very simple to, to use. And that was one of their first, one of the very first apps I, uh, as far as like tap tap gaming. And it went on a massive run. And because of that, they launched their, maybe not because of that, but in, in conjunction, they launched NotCoin. And NotCoin is based on TonCoin. It's built on TonCoin. And the market cap is one and a half billion. And right now, this may have actually slipped, but right now it's uh, ranked 67 in market cap. 67 for a token that never didn't exist a month, two months ago. And actually in one month it hit in, I think it was number 52. So if we take a look at this and we say, okay, well, there's something to do. Now, what can you do with, with NotCoin? Well, uh, opinions vary, but you can actually use this in your TonCoin wallet and across all your apps, you can use that for payments. So right there, there's a nice little use case, especially if you wanna buy a, a new VPN or you want to get on some type of uh, DeFi project, or you want, you want to send payments or something like that, you can actually use that. So there's that piece. That's one of the first apps. One of the other bigger apps, I think one of the biggest apps, this is probably their killer app, which is the wallet. And if Mark Zuckerberg would have been allowed to do this, it would have been game over. But Telegram beat him. And the reason why they, they, they beat him is because they separated themselves from uh, Telegram and the open network or ton coin from what's being built and of course, they don't let Americans use it because they know what America is all about. It's about suing the pants off everybody. But this right here, the wallet itself, it's integrated into the app. And again, I can't use the wallet. I'm in Puerto Rico, which is a commonwealth of the United States. But I can download TonKeeper. So now imagine this. You've got a billion users built in, right? Like we just talked about. Now you have a wallet that they can actually use, whether that be custodial or non-custodial. Now you can zip payments around at your whim and it's super fast and it's super cheap. What do you think is gonna happen? So with that, this is one of those use cases. I think it's, it's one of their killer case. And also they have, they have integrated Tether, which is a stable coin, 
which I think is going to probably do pretty well as time goes on. But the question that I had, which was this, was like, okay, you've got a bunch of apps within an app. You have to download Telegram on the App Store or the Android Store. So what does that mean for Apple? Because Apple probably wants a cut of this, right? I'm not going to allow this to, to, you know, just to, to run crazy. So they might actually just ban Telegram, which is, a, I, I think, a legitimate concern moving forward. I don't know if this will happen, but I can tell you that there's this other thing called progressive web apps. And uh, when I took a look at this, first of all, what's a progressive web app? It's a, it's a suite of tech enabling you to install a website and device as an application. This implies you are free to create a site without building iOS and Android apps. And if you're not familiar with it, maybe you're familiar with this, friend.tech. This is a big uh, Web3 uh, social media platform, which was not available on Apple. It wasn't available on Android, and they used progressive web apps to actually allow you to download it on any phone that you wanted to and actually use it in a decentralized manner. Great. So you're like, well, friend tech isn't that big, so who else is doing this? Good question. Tinder, and don't tell me you don't know what this is, because you do. <laughs> so Tinder actually is also a progressive web app, but why'd they do that? Because they're allowed on Apple and Android. Well, as, as it's related here, as one of the best examples of progressive web apps, we mentioned Tinder, over 75 million monthly users. The dating app turned to progressive web apps to improve user engagement and web experience. Also, Uber did it. I know we all know that. And Uber, the reason why they did it is they say generally, it became essential to make the service accessible to everyone, not just those with the latest smartphones. And also guess who's also doing it? You're right, Telegram. So Telegram has it on Apple, Android, and progressive web apps. So if something happens with Apple, which hey, it could, I'm just saying there's a backup plan and it looks pretty good. So we have that, but let's talk about adoption. And the only way we can get that is through on-chain analysis. So let's talk about interactions. Let's talk about the different wallets that are active. So first of all, just like we talked about with uh, Notcoin, uh, nothing really happened until January 2024. And he talks about a uh, ton aims for GameFi Throne. After launching in January, Notcoin paved the way for Telegram mini apps, which we just saw. Clicker Game came to Spotlight, tons active daily user count, went from 16,000 to over 600,000 on June 6th. Imagine that, that's one app. I don't think that's the flagship app. I think the big killer app is stable coins and payments zipping all the way across with their 1 billion users. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think we only got like 8 billion on the planet. So uh, that's a pretty big chunk. So let's take a look at um, on-chain metrics. And you can find this at Artemis. There's the source link right there, so you're not, uh, you know, you're not hoodwinked. You can't say like, "Oh, Rob didn't didn't share this information." He did. And there's a link in the description for all this stuff. So if we take a look at this is daily transactions. This is as of June 29th, 2024. Let me say that Cardano is at 60,000. Not bad. Ethereum's at 1.1 billion million. Base is at 3.2. Ton is at 4.2 million daily transactions. Near is 10.8, and the king right now, Solana at 43 and a half million. If we take a look at daily active addresses, I think this is where things are kind of getting off the ground. Cardano, 31,000, ton, 334,000, Ethereum, 416,000, Bay, 651, Near and Solana, one and a half and two million. Now let's take a look at total volume locked. Now, Ethereum is crushing everybody because it's been, it's had a long runway. It's been out there for quite some time. So Ethereum, almost 60 billion, Solana, 4.4, Base, 1.6, and ton at only 688 million which I say only because I think it's doing, it's gaining traction, especially with these mini apps and things that they're actually doing. And then lastly, fees. Now we want the activity high, but we want the fees low, obviously, because people want it what? Faster, cheaper, easier, right? Cheaper being the big case. So right now with what they're doing, Cardano is killing everybody at nine and a half thousand, but they don't have the amount of wallets and transactions true. Near is 33,000, base 92,000. Ton has only $106,000 in fees. Solana 1.7, Ethereum 2.9. I think that's right in line with the adoption that's going on. So that is the on-chain analysis for adoption. Now we need to get into the big question, which is everybody's favorite question. TPS, which stands for transactions per second. 
Remember, faster, cheaper, easier. We want it fast, right? So right now, this was actually on 31st of October, 2023. I don't know what it is right now, but there was an actual public test and they did over 100,000 transactions per second. That would be the world record on the first performance test. Now, this is not theoretical. There's a big difference between what a project says it can do and what it actually does. This was actually put forth. We're going to go over how this actually worked. And here's the, here's the base, the baseline of the performance test. It was actually 104,000 before it maxed out. They did chart chains over 500. And if we take a look at the public test itself, this is actually a live stream hosted by Ton Foundation, audited by Certic, which is, which is a major uh, smart contract platform. The Ton blockchain set a world record by achieving 104,000 transactions per second. How does that stack up to traditional? Well, Visa averages 6,100, maximum 65,000. So if you just think to yourself, wow, that's almost twice of what Visa can do. Payments, I don't think is going to be a problem. MasterCard, maximum is 5,000, average is 412, and PayPal average is 700, maximum we don't know. Now let's take a look at the different networks that are out there. The closest that it came to was Solana at 59,400. Now, before everybody blows up and says, well, Solana can do this, this, and this. And then also there's a big upgrade that's coming. And because that upgrade, it's gonna do 1 million. That may be true, and I hope it does because I own Solana. I'd like it to work. I'd like it to massively appreciate. Trust me, I'm with you on this one. But I'm just saying, there's a difference between the theoretical and what actually has been proven. And of course, we can say that, well, it's been proven in some other way. Sure. All I'm telling you is that TonCoin right now, TPS, 104,000. Bitcoin's at seven. That's fine. I don't use Bitcoin for transactions. Ethereum 20, BNB Smart Chain, which is highly centralized. We're going to go over that in a second. 2200, Ripple, 1500, Doge, 30, ah, 33, wow. Cardano, 250, and so on and so forth. Again, link to this entire presentation is in the description with the source of all the information. So here's how the test actually went out because details matter. So what Tun did is they rented 256 servers from Alibaba Cloud for validator nodes and launched a separate Tun blockchain network. So right here, this is the most perfect of conditions you could possibly get, right? They rented it from Alibaba. They created a special bomb smart contract that clones itself, transmits transactions, and the network grows exponentially until it redlined, which we saw at 104,000. On the test network, this method created a mass amount of transactions as if millions of users were sending them. We detonated the, the bomb for 10 minutes, resulting in intense load growth. Network split into shard chains, which is the same thing that near protocol is doing, which is why it's so fast. Network split into 512 shards and processed 910K transactions per second. Network maintained this load for a while until we manually shut it down. Could it have gone farther? Don't know, but I can tell you that it went over 100,000. The entire test was conducted publicly in real time by Tun's core team, what were seen by CertTech and documented in detail. All tech date, details and test results can be found here. Again, link in the description. So the one thing I would like to make mention is sharding and shard chains. I know some people think it's, uh, I mean, I, I heard about this since I got in 2017, but uh, what Tun is doing is a little bit different. And the efficiency of the Tun blockchain lines affect the number of users or the load grows, it splits into these sub blockchains called shard chains. And each shard chain is operated by its own group of validators. How many validators are out there? We'll take a look. It's about 3000. Okay. For a more detailed description of what I just talked about, there was a great video that uh, me and Coin Bureau Club teamed up with. And I put that in the member section of Dan Teaches Crypto. Now, before you start rolling your eyes and go, oh, this is what it was. He wants me to sign up for his super paid service. It's free. It's 100% free. It'll always be free. I don't even spam you. I ask for your email so I can update you when a new video comes out. So watch that video. It's in module four reviews. You might like it. And then the question then becomes is decentralization because why is decentralization so important? Well, it's important because if you have a single point of attack, you'll fail, right? Governments can attack you, DDoS attacks can attack you, hackers can attack you, and you can go down and then everything's screwed up, right? So the more decentralized you are, the better off you are for security, for privacy, and for uptime. So for ton nodes, I actually misspoke, it's only 362 nodes. But the, I'm gonna say that again, 362 nodes. 
How does that compare? Is that good? Is that bad? Well, it's better than Wells Fargo. I'll tell you that. It's not that great. And if we have to be fair, because we have to include the positive and the negatives, as far as like nodes go, did you know that Bitcoin, and there's a great website on, and I, I link these in the, down here, Bitnodes, Pool.pm, and Solana Beach. As far as like Bitcoin nodes, you got almost 20,000 nodes. That's a lot. Cardano has 3,000 pools, and Solana from Solana Beach has is right now 1,500, 1,518, 1,518 validators or nodes up and running right now doing their thing. The question is, how heavily weighted are those validators? Because you have to ask yourself, like, I mean, for, for Solana and Cardano, like, I mean, you have these pools, like, well, actually, no, I can't say that for, for Cardano because there's an actual limit. Uh, we have our own stake pool, DNU stake pool. But for, for Solana, what is the limit for them? Because maybe you have like the top 20 different validators. They have I don't know, a bajillion uh, Solana locked up and then the other ones don't so much. Not for sure on Solana, but I know they got a lot of validators and I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna say anything negative about them because I think they're doing a fine job. Sometimes it sputters and doesn't work, but uh, that's why you take the cartridge out and blow on it, right? But here's the big thing. That was a joke. Here's the big thing. Binance chain. Do you know how many validators Binance chain has? 29. Let that sink in. 29 Binance chain validators. So if you think to yourself, well, that's a could be a single point of failure. Absolutely, it could be. But it seems like nobody cares about decentralization because as you can see here, BNB chain uh, is number four by market cap. So all the talk about we need to have decentralization doesn't matter for a lot of people, apparently. And what I like about this one, this is from CoinGo Live, you can see how far away they are from their all-time high. Uh, Bitcoin's only 15% away from its all-time high. BNB's about 20%. Sol's 43% away from its all-time high. XRP is 80, ouch, 85%. But you see Ton here, which is now number nine, it's only 7% away from its all-time high. Just saying, not too bad. So that's the good stuff. Let's get to some other bad stuff, huh? I don't wanna, I don't wanna give you a bunch of hopium here. I want you to make an informed decision. Tokenomics, let's be honest. This isn't the greatest. Tokenomics themselves, and I get why they did this. Actually, I know exactly why they did it, and you can watch that in the Tucker Carlson uh, interview. If you go to the website, I, uh, my Dan teaches crypto, it's there for you to watch. Here's the market cap right now, 18.7. That's one of the big reasons why people don't want to invest in TonCoin. They want to get that you know, 100x gem that's out there, ranked number 2,000. Uh, good luck but that's the market cap right now. But the circulating supply is 2.4. Total supply is 5.1. That's billion, I might add. So roughly half. And max supply is infinity. That's what it has right here. Now, there may be a little discrepancies here about the infinity thing because of the amount of inflation, which we're going to go over right now. Don't lose me. It's not too bad. So, bef so for this, you've got two point, let's just say 2.5 circulating supply. I like round numbers. Very easy for me. You have 2.5 billion. 25% of the token supply is locked up right now. So for the total supply is 5.1. Just add on 25%. What is that number? Actually, this is what happened. So there was a, a fund because people didn't like that whole part about, hey, there's way too much out there. We need to lock this stuff up. So the Ton Believers Fund, or simply the locker, was launched by the community. It was launched on October 23rd, 2023. And it actually, uh, actually ended. They actually started on October 12th. And people could just lock up their, their ton coin. And of course, they could get rewards later, which is why they have that inflation rate. The phase will last for three years. That's dedication, I got to tell you. Because if that's three years, you're looking at 2026. Let me do some quick math. Yeah, 2026. If you're at 2026, I am personally a believer in the, the uh, four-year cycles. That means 2025 could be the blow-off top. And 2026 could be a pretty big dip. So if they believe that much, more power to them. October 2023, ton community said that they locked up 1.3 billion ton. Let me say that again. They locked up 1.3 billion ton. That is in the locker smart contracts. So on top of that, the other issue that I got when we did that poll about why aren't people so enthused about uh, ton coin, they said the concentration of tokens, which I got you. Trust me, I got you. If you watch that Tucker Carlson video, you'll understand why, why this is. 
Let's take a look at concentration of tokens as far as the most decentralized, which would be Bitcoin. Some, and then some other ones, we'll just say that. So Bitcoin, this is from Into the Block. Link's right there. If you take a look at this, investors, and th this could also be centralized exchange, just so you know. Investors, 11%. Whales, 1%, mean they own a high amount, or 1% or more. And then retail is at 8%. That's us. So this is the most decentralized. You want that, you want, we do not want the whales to be the majority. Like Dogecoin, like it has like 70% or something like that in whales. Correct me in the comment section, I'm sure you will. And then investors, you know, we don't want it that high. We want the highest number in retail, right? Because that means that all those tokens are in our hands and not some VCs and whales, right? Well, look at Ethereum. Ethereum investors are 10%. Whales are 41%. Again, that could be centralized exchanges, but let's be honest, it's a, it's a lot of people. And retail is 49%. Do you own Ethereum? Why do you own Ethereum? If you do, just know that that's a lot of whales. What about Dogecoin? 37, ah, see, I stand corrected. 37% in retail, 42, wow, it still is high. 42% of the whales and investors are 21%. Cardano, probably the second most decentralized. And I'm sure this would be in the top 15, we'll say. Whales are 9%, investors 20%, and retail 71%. Pretty good. Actually, the best one right next to the Bitcoin. And now we take a look at TonCoin. And yes, I did say in the beginning, this was months and months. This is actually last year when Guy put out that video. I said I would not invest in TonCoin because the concentration is too great into whales hands. Things change. And if the data, data changes, I change. Right now we've got whales at 29%. Pretty high, but not as bad as say Ethereum and Dogecoin. Investors at 30, 30%, eh, not too great, but retail at 41%. So pretty much right in between Ethereum and Dogecoin. And why is that? It's because as time has gone on, in green is the whales, in blue is the investors, and in orange is the retail. You can see a difference just in 30 days. We saw a lot of those change hands, and people will say, ah, that's just the VCs and the people dumping on them. Hey, I'm just letting you know right now, uh, ton coins at its almost all-time high. If they were dumping, I'm sure retail is pretty happy that they were because they got to actually buy it up. So that's where we have right now. Can things change? Absolutely. And let's talk about inflation. So there's a great data website called Tunstat. And as far as like tokenomics, as far as inflation goes, this is the big thing. Tokens are ton, excuse me, ton coins minted per day. 56,000 per day. That's a lot. So you got to ask yourself, well, well, what is that sell pressure? As of July 1st, today is not July 1st, today is July 3rd. But uh, I've been putting this together for like two days. On July 1st, one ton was worth 759. Actually, I think it's worth the same thing right now. So if you had 56,798, that's like 431,000 of sell pressure per day, which you're like, eh, okay. And then ton coins are burned per day, 6,000. So you can offset that a little bit, but not much. How does that compare to say Ethereum? Well, if you go to ultrasound money uh, over their time frame of one day, the inflation rate is 0.665% per year. The supply change and time frame of one day, just one day, is 2187 So if you got one ETH worth $3,455, $3,455, and you got 2187 inflation, you, you got a sell pressure of $7.5 million. What about Solana? Well, this is SPL tokens, so it's not really completely accurate. SPL tokens are everything within the, the Solana, found, uh, Solana ecosystem. So on July 1st, one soul is 145. That could be 2.1 million of sell pressure, but that's just, again, just on the SPLs. But if you want to take a look at the inflation rate annually, and this is from Solana Compass, you're looking at 5.182%. The final inflation is 1.5%. Why is that? It's because they are, they're betting that the Solana's inflation means that non-stakers pay stakers. And over time, uh, it is thought that the fee volume should increase to compensate validators for the fall and staking rewards, making it not so much inflationary. So if you want to look at annual inflation, ton is 0.6%, ETH is 0.66, SOL is 5.1 or the final at 1.5%. So they're pretty much in line with uh, pretty much everybody else. So not too bad. So now let's get to the pros and cons as I see it. So I see a ton coin 
it's got a massive following. I mean, can we we can say that with 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 assurance? Nine hundred million, probably a billion now. Probably going to go higher than that as time goes on. And also for these for these apps, because it was just a messaging platform. It wasn't like really big social media, but as the apps come out and they actually have more functionality and use case, I think they're just getting started. The tech is solid, like we talked about with the shard chains. It's super easy to use. If you download it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you're in Web3 and you go to any conference, that's, that's what everybody's asking you for anyhow. But that's just Web3. As time goes on, I think the normies will get into it a little bit more. But we've already got 900 million people or almost a billion. A billion people are not in Web3. A billion people are using Telegram for other reasons. And the pros is it's taken on Apple with apps. I think that's that's a big win if they pull it off because let's be honest, Apple and Google, uh, that's a duopoly. And they're, they put the pinch on everybody. So here's the cons. <laughs> I said this in the same one. They're taking on Apple with apps. And we talked about, you know, if, if progressive web apps didn't exist, this would be a very bad thing, a very big thing, because they could get banned. I'm not saying that they can't get banned, but I mean, to take that fight to the megalith that is uh, Apple, I think is uh, is highly risky. And uh, you could see that, uh, you know, be a big problem down the road. Also the cons is tokenomic unlocks, because we didn't talk about the unlocks. I could not find it anywhere. I even took a look at the foundation. I took a look at the white paper and maybe I missed it. But you have to know that even if with another lockup, let's say they're at 4 billion, they have 5 billion, they have about another billion to go of tokens. Those are going to get unlocked at some point. And if that happens, you very well can, ass can assume that some of those people will take profits. If you're at an all time high, people will take profits. That's where they're at right now. I'm actually surprised we haven't seen a slide in price of Toncoin because when we went to Bitcoin for 73,000, and then went to 70,000, somewhere in that range, you start to see a massive, a pretty good amount of people selling off. There's a reason why Bitcoin's around 60,000 right now. It's not because people are diamond handsing. It's because the same people that told you to diamond hands forever, they are the ones that are selling on you. And of course, the miners also have to sell. So when I take a look at this, the token unlocks is an, is an issue. Inflationary, of course, is an issue. We always wanna be aware of that. Next con is this, US government crackdown. The game that got me into Telegram was Hamster Combat. You can take uh, information from there. They've, they're ranging with like 600 million members, something crazy like that. Their YouTube channel has like over 20 million. Their X account is over 10 million. I mean, they're really crushing it right now. But one of the things that I saw is that I ran, this was a, this was a, a, a story out of Cointelegraph. A lot of people in Iran are playing the game because they want the airdrop. And because of that, and all those wallets that we just talked about, what do you think, what do you think the American government's gonna, gonna wanna do when there's an ability to transfer funds quite easily in a non-custodial wallet and zip it around the world? They're not gonna like that. But here's the thing, here's the thing. You never know what's, what they're gonna do, so that's why that wallet itself is not available to US citizens. So we'll get from there. And then the last two is this, already high on market cap, it's true, it's 19 billion. Solana is 66 billion, Ethereum is 395 billion. If you don't think Solana and Ethereum are gonna go up, you probably don't think Tuncoin is gonna go up either. So, I mean, 19 billion to Solana, 66 billion, that's a 3X and 395 billion. I'm not saying it's gonna flip, I'm just saying as time goes on and we get to that bull run that everybody talks about, I think uh, Ethereum might go above that 395 billion. I think Solana mm -hmm. might go above 66 billion. Just saying, it could. And if 10 coins at 19 billion, maybe it's not that bad. It's not the 1 million market cap you could get on a, on a meme coin, but this will lead me to my last point, which is the unknowns. Let me ask you a question. How are those meme coins working out for everybody? I gambled into it. I made a little bit, lost a little bit. I followed my rules, did okay. I don't wanna keep gambling anymore. Right? I don't want to be a degenerate. There's a reason why I only lived in Vegas for two years. It gets shady. So when you don't know about the unknowns, and this is the big thing, and I, and I, and I put Voyager in there for a specific reason. First of all, I talked about Voyager a lot. I talked about Celsius a lot. Didn't talk about BlockFi or FTX, but I thought they were, especially Voyager, a solid play because it was just, it was a business model. And the business model was to be the hotels.com 
of all the centralized exchanges and just use the lowest price. And if they would have stuck to that, they would have been fine. The problem was they didn't, and they did a loan to Three Arrows Capital of $640 million. And because of that loan, they collapsed. There are so many things that could go wrong in every single amount of investing that you do, and you'll never know what's going on behind the scenes. So that's why, like, there is this, let me bring this up right here. Bill says, come on, Rob, don't pitch this pump and dump on your subscribers. Bill's right. Bill's right. I'm not pitching anything, first of all. I'm giving you all the information that you can possibly use to make an informed decision. I'm not telling you to buy. I'm not telling you to sell. I'm just telling you this are the facts right here. There's massive amount of potential. There's some pretty big risk. What does that mean for me? What I am doing is dollar cost averaging every single day in TonCoin. Could this be a mistake? Sure, I made some mistakes, but I mean, it's a pretty good place. Investing in Bitcoin, investing in Ethereum, investing in Solana, investing in Avalanche, investing in Stacks when Stacks was nothing. This is the things that you have to be, to, to be considered about. So with all these things, these unknowns, You'll never know what it is, but the things that I see with TonCoin, I think it's doing pretty well. And that is it for that. So now that we've gone through the whole thing, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Let's do two things. First, let's do the giveaway, like I promised. And also, there's a quick fundraiser. So the giveaway, I want everybody to put their wallet address in the comment section right now, in the live stream, the live stream comment section. You can find your, your wallet. Let's see at ton.org forward slash wallets. Uh, links in the description, actually. Uh, so you can get that and then put your wallet in here and let's see just how fast this is. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, and as I'm getting, as I'm going through this, I also wanna share with this. Oops, oops, oops. There's this thing we do every Sunday here in Puerto Rico. It's a uh, dog walk, the local shelter, Amigos de los Animales. And that's Audrey right there. She is the founder and she's the one that actually created it. And it's a great, it's a great thing to do for the, for the dogs. So this is us. Actually, this is a couple of weeks ago. That's out while March 5th. And we take the shelter dogs for a walk. They do great. And uh, it's a good thing. I like it. The problem with Migos de los Animales is that the shelter itself is one story. That's the shelter. But Audrey here, which you can see right here, she actually donated her entire house to the shelter. That's her doing all these things. Now what she wants to do is she's like, look, I've, I'm running out of space for myself. And uh, she's like, I'd like to build a, a second story. So what we did is we put things together and we did a fundraiser. There's a link in the description. And we're trying to raise funds so she can build her own place. Imagine this. 30 years ago, you give up your prized possession, which is your house, for dogs. And then you didn't do anything. <laughs> I hate to say it. Audrey did not do a great job of, of uh, saving. So what we're trying to do is get her into... Uh, or build a second story on top of the shelter itself. So again, there's a link in the description, spine in your heart, you can uh, give away. I'll also be posting this on, on Twitter. Now let's get to the giveaway. Okay, first things first. I need to, thank you. What's these links in the chat? <laughs> Good question. Hmm. What I need to do is grab these. Let me see something. Hold on one second. Actually, everybody, yeah, keep posting your uh, your wallets in there. Let me, ah. Okay, got them. It's a little bit difficult. So let's try this. Alt aficionado. Da, da, da. This is the fun part. So let's see. I'm going to send. No, sorry, that's not a, sorry, alt aficionado, that's not the right one. Huh, that's weird. Try this again. Okay. Captain Pugwash, winner. Captain, I'm going to send you a specific amount. I just sent it right now. I want you to put in the comment section how much it is. And I want to see how fast it is. I want everybody to time it. 
And that is from Captain Pugwash. Now, let's see. Oh, look at that one. It's cheap, fraction of a penny. Okay. It says it went through. Okay. Pugwash, how much did I send you? Tell me when it gets there. Let's see. Send. J.I. Alex, your winner. And confirm and send. Wow, that was fast. That's right. Captain, how long did that take? I must have sent it like 30 seconds ago. <laughs> That's funny. Let's see. Let me get this. Wallet. Start giving this stuff away. Send. Winner. Center. Whatever. Let's give a uh, five. Icons Global Network. How much did I give? Let me know in the comments. Because it says it's already went through. All right. Roadless Explorer, send, winner, let's do four, okay, same thing, Jockey of Crypto, nice, hey, 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 okay, this is very seamless, send, Paste, continue, five. Ah, it's much easier when I figure all the steps. Okay. Jockey of Crypto, how much did I send you? Roll this Explorer. Send, paste, two. And I'm sending everybody different amounts. I just want to see... Again, I just want to see how fast or how slow it is. David, Bordis, send. We got a long way to go, everybody. All right, six ton, six ton. <laughs> yep, there we go. Uh, let's see. Steven says, you could have just skipped all that, Rob, and just know the VCs will pump time. Maybe. Yeah, icons will know 38.82. That's in dollars amount, I think. Ben, I don't know about this one. You're welcome. Do you people pay tax on donations? Yeah, pay your taxes. Great. All right. Let's keep going. What is this? He app. He yap. Done. All right. Wallet. Send. Okay. He yap. Tell me how fast that that goes. Din p. Send. Paste. Yeah. Who is going to be a good one for you? All right. Then P, let me know. Nick is the Echo Base Network. Interesting. Let's see. I don't know if this is right. Yeah. So Nick, you gave me a 0x wallet. That's probably, a, I'm going to guess, EVM compatible, but that's not TonCoin. So sorry. Didn't work out. Let's see. Mohammed, UKA. Let's see. What I like about this is the the transaction fees are so they're so low. Oh come on, there we go. They're low and it's fast. That's all I really care about. And then Boten, and then we'll catch up and see if you guys got it. Send. 
The only time this has worked for me, when I did, I did this with Solana. And when I did it with Solana, it was fast. One time I tried to do this with Ethereum, it was a disaster. Yeah, layer one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Error occurred. Let's try that again. Okay.